so as already discussed stress at a point is dependent on the orientation of the cross section area that we consider so technically speaking uh, you can draw infinite number of orientations at a point so therefore you should have infinite number of stresses however it is enough we can show that it later that it is enough if you know the stress on six perpendicular faces at a point then the stress on any other inclination or orientation can be found out now in this diagram we'll uh, we will draw what is known as a stress element okay so this stress element is nothing but a, a cube with six faces okay the dimensions of this uh, cube are very very small uh, that's why we call it as infinite decimal that means tending to zero so basically this entire uh, box or cube represents stress at a single point okay so if we know stresses on these six faces then you draw any inclination any orientation you will you will be able to find the stresses on that particular orientation or surface okay now let's start with the the first concept called naming of these faces now there are six faces uh, we have certain convention the naming procedure to be followed so as you can see in this diagram we have got x axis here y axis here and z axis here now the faces there are totally six faces if we call it as say this is right face this yellow one is right face and other side you have a left face which is not shown in the figure and this is your front face that is uh, blue colored is your front face and um, back side to that we'll have a back face and this one is your top face and uh, below this will be your bottom face now the sign convention uh, in mechanics of material follows this rule now each area is identified by its normal suppose if i draw a surface like this some surface okay if this surface will have a direction the direction of that is given by a line drawn perpendicular to this so if you draw a line like this and perpendicular to this so the direction of this perpendicular will be called as the direction of the area below this okay suppose if the inclined area is like this so there is the area is inclined like this and you have to draw a normal to this okay and the direction of that normal will be the direction of the area okay using this concept let us look at this uh, uh, yellow colored face that is uh, right face okay this right face has got its normal along x axis okay if you draw uh, actually this right face is in the yz plane this one that is yellow is in the yz plane and if you draw a line perpendicular to this it will be along x axis therefore this face is given a name called x face so that means what x face is a face whose normal is along the positive x axis or x axis now again there are two if you look at the another area here let us say back side you have one more area okay so this is parallel to this area this one okay as you can see the back side one sorry the left one so the left one and right one are parallel both are perpendicular to perpendicular to x axis however if you look at this particular area which has got its normal along the positive x axis hence we call the name x face exactly parallel to this other side uh, the normal to that will be along the negative x axis therefore we call that face as negative x face so similarly if you look at the top face top face has got its normal that is perpendicular along the y axis therefore this top face is called positive y face so uh, exactly below this the bottom one is called negative y face okay uh, which is not shown here it is hidden in this okay so similarly if you look at the front face this is okay this is uh, z face okay because its normal is parallel to i'm sorry its normal is along the z axis so therefore we call it as positive z face so exactly behind this so back side will have negative z face so this is how we identify the faces in a stress element okay to summarize a face with its normal along positive x axis is called positive x face and the face with its normal along the negative x axis is called negative x face similarly we can identify positive y face negative y face positive z face and negative z face okay so that is about naming of the faces now let's come back to the naming of the stresses if you observe here uh, 
in general on any surface there are only two types of stresses possible one is the stress which is perpendicular to the surface okay and another one is stress which is parallel to the surface I will just draw a surface okay a surface some surface and uh, you can have only two possible one is your normal stress okay another one is okay now I will have another stress which is parallel to the surface which we call it as shear stress okay now sometimes the shear stress is again uh, divided into two parts or two components because for example if uh, this is my x axis let us say this is x axis this is y axis I want to know the component of this shear along x axis and along y axis in that case what I will do is I will divide this shear stress into two components one along x axis another along y axis so in general uh, for a surface you can have only three stresses one one stress is normal stress that is perpendicular to the surface another two one which are parallel to the surface which we call it as shear stress these two are only convenient uh, just a matter of convenience for us because even you could simply say only one stress is sufficient however for convenience we just split this horizontal component into two parts along x axis along y axis so in general at any phase we can draw three stresses one is normal stress perpendicular to the surface and other two are shear stresses parallel to the x axis and parallel to the y axis or in other words these two components are parallel to the uh, surface on which you, we are measuring the stress now with this basic let us see how to name the stresses acting on a cube now there is a surface like this this is your uh, positive x phase on that as I discussed there is only one component of normal stress that we call it as sigma xx and again there can be two okay that is sigma xy and sigma xz so there will not be any confusion with respect to sigma x because this is along the x axis we call it as sigma x some uh, here similarly if you look at the y, y phase we will have uh, sigma y and sigma z now when it comes to shear there will be two things that has to be that have to be considered here now this stress if you observe for example sigma x y it has got two subscripts that is x and y the x1 represents the phase on which it is acting okay so if i write sigma x y that means the first x rep represent the phase on which this stress is acting and second component is y which says it is along the y direction so when i say sigma x y the stress is acting on the x phase in the y direction similarly if you observe this particular sigma x z what is the meaning of this it says the stress is acting on the x phase but in the z direction okay this is on the x phase if you look at this z direction is like this so this is acting in that direction now can we have another stress like this it is not required even if you have a stress acting on this particular another direction in between so you will resolve into two components one along, along one along the y axis another along the z axis again you will still get back the original sigma xz and sigma xy now similarly you have sigma xx sigma xx is obvious okay it is acting on the x phase and it is along the x direction okay so therefore the sign convention is very important if i say if i write sigma ij what is the meaning of this first the first i refers to the name of the phase on which it is acting and the second one represents the direction of the stress in which the stress is acting so therefore on any surface you will have two subscripts one indicating the the first sub subscript indicates the surface on which it is acting and second subscript indicates the direction on which it is acting now come back to this uh, front face okay here we have a uh, yellow colored the dark yellow arrow you can see this it has got a notation of sigma z z it means it is acting on the z face yes of course it is acting on the z face and it is also along the z direction therefore you call it as sigma z z so this is a normal stress now look at these two forces stresses sigma z x and sigma z y so usually when you see two different uh, values of subscript x y y z z x you can understand it's a shear stress so when i say sigma z x what is the meaning of this sigma z x means the stress is acting on the z phase okay so this is acting on the z phase okay now what is the second x means it is acting along the along the x direction so therefore this component will be your sigma z x similarly 
the other component sigma z y is acting on the z phase and it is in the y direction. Therefore, we have two things to be considered when we notate or when we write a stress component. So, totally how many phases are there? Actually, we have uh, totally six phases. In each, we will have uh, three one, uh, three components of stresses. So, that means uh, you will have 18 uh, stress components on the total boxes, but you will see is later that the, the, sh the shear component, for example, so sigma zx will be equal to sigma xz because, because of the equilibrium, uh, they will have to be made equal. Therefore, uh, in res effectively, we will only be left with uh, only six components, six components which are unique in nature. Okay, to summarize, we have normal stress and shear stress. Normal stresses are sigma xx, sigma yy and sigma z and shear stresses are tau xy, tau yz and tau zx. Now, as I discussed already, sigma xx implies x phase, x direction, sigma yy, me, yy means y phase, y direction, zz means z phase, z direction. So, these are normal stresses which are all, they are always perpendicular to the phase on which they are acting, whereas shear stresses are the stresses which are acting in parallel, okay? they are parallel to the surface on which they are acting. So, now look at this, tau xy implies it is acting on the x phase and it is in the y direction. Similarly, you can understand what about what is tau z and what is tau zx okay Th that was about uh, naming uh, of the stresses now in addition to that the third component that third concept is sign convention sign convention means uh, here we are saying some stress is positive and some stress is negative how to identify a particular stress as positive stress and particular stress as negative stress so for that we follow a convention uh, that convention is known as sign convention. Why this kind of convention is required? Okay, let us answer to this question now. Look at this component, particular component on the x phase. We have got tau xz. Uh, somebody may uh, wish to draw this diagram, something like this. Okay, uh, you, you may draw tau xz in this fashion. Okay, this is also tau xz because this is acting on, uh, this is acting on the x phase and this is acting on the z direction. Only thing is the positive z is in this direction this is negative okay but still you can call it as tau xz only so the question mm, comes whether this should be taken as positive or this should be taken as positive therefore to to, to resolve this those issues and to avoid ambiguity we will follow what is known as stress con stress convention or sign convention in sign convention we identify the sign of the stress based on two things one is the phase on which it is acting and second one is the direction along which it is acting okay so these two things will determine whether the particular stress is a positive stress or negative stress okay so it's something like this so let me read out once a stress is positive when it acts on a positive phase of an, an element in the positive direction of an axis and it is negative when it acts on the positive phase of an element in the negative direction of an axis so what does it mean simply is this so, if you have a stress component which is acting on the positive phase and it is acting along the positive direction, then you call it as positive. And another way is, if there is a stress acting on the negative phase in the negative direction, then also it is positive. Only thing the stress becomes negative, that is the condition in which stress becomes negative is, when you have a positive phase, that is stress acting on a positive phase and it is along the negative direction or other words it is acting uh, acting on the negative phase but it is along the positive direction so when there is a mismatch between the uh, phase and the directions then you call it as negative if they are matching that is positive phase positive direction that is positive negative phase and negative direction that is also positive so when there is a match you call it as positive when there is a mismatch you call it as negative so to summarize uh, let me show this uh, table Okay, in this table, we have a phase. If it is a positive phase, that is positive x axis or positive y axis or positive z axis. Okay, and then it is acting along a positive direction. That is, it could be plus x, plus y, plus z. When both are positive, you will take sign as positive. The opposite of that, let us say it is acting on the negative phase. That is, minus x phase, minus y phase, minus z phase. And then it is the direction, okay, on that particular phase is 
is also along the negative direction that is minus x minus y minus z then you, the, the, in that case also it will be positive. So, when phase and directions both have got the same sign then it is positive otherwise it becomes negative that means uh, uh, it is acting on the positive x phase let us say it is acting on the uh, positive x phase and then it is acting uh, on that particular positive x phase it is acting on the minus y direction then there is a mismatch then you call it give a sign of negative. So, or in other words uh, even if it is acting on the negative phase but in the positive direction then also it is negative ok. So, if there is a same sense the sense is same then you call it as positive when the phase on which it is acting and the direction both have got same direction you call it as positive stress if they are not so then it is called negative stress. So, if you go back to this diagram come back to the original diagram where we have drawn stress element. Now, look at this the, the stress that we have drawn here. So, this is a positive x phase ok. So, this is positive x phase and whereas this stress is acting in the positive z direction. So, phase is positive direction is also positive therefore, this is a positive one. Whereas, look at this the one the stress that I have drawn in the red color. So, though it is acting on the positive phase, but it is acting on the negative z direction. So, phase is positive direction is negative therefore, this will be negative ok. So, in this entire diagram we have shown only the positive positive case for example, let us take the top case. So, here this tau y x whether it is positive or not how to identify ok look at this it is acting on the top phase that is positive y phase ok because its normal is along the positive y axis. So, therefore, is it, it is positive phase now the direction is x so that is x is here. So, this is also acting along x direction that means both phase is positive and the direction of the force uh, uh, stress is also positive therefore, this is the positive component. Now, how to make this as negative when will this become negative? is acting in the opposite direction let us say. Instead of tau y x if tau y x was acting in this direction exactly opposite to that then what, what is the condition? Now, though it is acting on a positive phase, but the direction of the stress is in the negative x axis ok. Therefore, this becomes a negative stress. So, like this you can identify whether the stress component is positive or negative. So, this is all about uh, sign conventions. So, the table summarizes it. And of course, there is a rotational equilibrium in the sense uh, we are assuming tau, uh, the body is not rotating. If the body is uh, not rotating, the condition is that tau x y should be equal to tau y y x, and similarly tau z x is equal to tau x z. All those stresses, you know, the shear stresses, uh, whether you write x y or y x, they'll be same. So, so is the case with other components. So that is about uh, the concept of. Uh, uh, three concepts uh, we have studied basically. Uh, first one is. To summarize this, we have naming of the phases if the normal to the phase is along the positive x direction or y direction or z direction we call it as a positive phase. So, that is about naming of the phases and we had notation, notation of the notation of writing stresses. So, we wrote every stress component in two form in the two subscripts one is first subscript subscript always refers to the uh, the area on which it is acting and the second subscript refers to the direction of the force or the stress on that particular uh, surface. So, that is how, how that is how we name the stresses ok. And the third concept was sign convention. So, that is uh, that will tell you when to take a particular stress component as positive and when to take that as negative. So, we studied here when both the faces and uh, uh, directions are positive or when uh, face is negative and direction is negative in both the cases you got a positive sign. Otherwise, if there is a mismatch, you, go, you give a negative sign. So, that is about uh, the sign conventions.